I did go to university myself, and this is about as busy a lecture as I've ever seen when I was there, so that's pretty good. I don't know if it's something to do with the fact that there's wine involved. Um, there are no samples, I'm afraid to disappoint you. Um, so my name is Richard Winnington. I'm the owner of a, a wine and spirit events and educational business called Cheshire Mersey Wine School. Uh, my name's Mark Winnington, identical twin brother to Richard and 50% owner within the wine school. Um, so our business, what it's about basically is it's a, uh, an events business, if you will. So it works in, in the educational side of wine and spirit. So there's no retail at all. Um, everything that we do is uh, wine and spirit tastings to both the general public, uh, to the private sector, as well as uh, staff training for, for you know ho the hospitality trade and so on. So uh, it's all about fun and informal events uh, where we sort of sell the experience rather than selling uh, physical bottles of wine or gin or whatever it may be. Going self-employed wasn't probably an option when, when I first went to university, so business plans wasn't high on the agenda. Um, there were some entrepreneurial um, case studies that took place, um, which I remember doing many times uh, as part of the business school in Liverpool. So um, looking at successful businesses as well as unsuccessful, um, looking at large multinational businesses as well as small businesses was something that I looked at. So getting a gauge of what successful means doesn't necessarily mean big, it just meant uh, what you did kind of, uh, I guess, see as successful. So there were a lot uh, of business related modules that were, were a huge part of university, but actual business plans didn't happen for me until I joined uh, a graduate scheme at a company called Majestic Wine, where I had to put a business model together and a business um, plan together for a small store in the Lake District. The transition between being a student into being a, a businessman, I think, was, was gradual really, which was, was quite nice because uh, what I didn't do is graduate and then just go straight from being a student into being self-employed. So for me it was about getting onto a, a, a good graduate scheme which had the, the, the credentials behind it. So for me it was sort of uh, 2011 starting at Majestic Wine, uh, again started as a graduate trainee manager uh, and worked our way up through there, got the relevant qualifications before then kind of deciding that it wasn't the retail that we were interested in, however the product itself is what we, we really enjoyed. So uh, that's obviously then in turn where we uh, set up the wine school in 2014. So it was gradual, you know, we learnt a lot in the trade from our time spent at Majestic Wine, which is where we, we both worked, albeit different stores. Uh, and again, that set us up nicely to sort of uh, to, to become business owners, if you will, at, at the sort of 20, age of 24. So still quite young, but, you know, relatively experienced and uh, yeah, it was a good time to sort of start that up. I wouldn't say there were any problems in terms of starting the, the, the business uh, that we, we necessarily came up against as such. I guess the biggest problem was kind of one, having finished at Majestic, knowing what it is that we wanted to do. Um, we just knew that it was it was still going to be in the wine trade and that's where we kind of stumbled across the, the local wine school network and uh, you know, luckily for us, we'd had savings since we were, we were younger and uh, what we didn't necessarily have to do, luckily, was sort of head to a bank and get loans as such, but we invested what we had uh, together into to purchasing this business and, uh, you know, I think that was a good decision. Again, Mark's still tied into the, the, the business from a monetary uh, perspective, which is great and still helps out as and, as and when needed too. But, uh, you know, I guess the main challenge is really is kind of once you are up and running and that website goes live, it's, it's how you interact with people, how you drive customers to your website, how you... Uh, you know, sort of, sort of build up that customer base and, and get a name for yourself. So the most difficult thing, like they, they generally say, is the first year, you know, and if you can overcome the challenges of the first year, I think, you know, it's hopefully onwards and upwards, so. I guess is, is try your best to utilise everything that you can get available from be it guest speakers um, or any outside help, um, career fairs, or anything that might help you give some inspiration if you don't know what you want to do. Uh, business degrees can be very open-ended, so, you know, it could be a whole host of styles of business, be it marketing or PR or self-employment, whatever you decide to do, where you have to do all of that together. Um, graduate schemes are great. Speak to people in, in career trade fairs or whatever you may, you know, get to if you can, um, and make the most of getting to all your lectures. Yeah. <laughs> And anything that you've got, you know, once the, use your degree to your full advantage, you know, go, go into a sector that you know, you know, you've studied for this particular degree, you know, just, just put that into, a, into the working world and, and you know, use it to your strengths. So.